Now we're ready to connect up the socket to the impact gun. You're going to take the impact gun. There's a square in the socket. Connect it up. You never, ever, 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 ever want to pull the trigger while the socket's on here. It'll spin. It'll fly off. It'll hit you. It'll hit a car. It'll hit something. You don't want to do that. It's very, very dangerous. If you want to hear the sound of the impact gun, <laughs> it's a cool sound, take the socket off. If the socket's off, I'm not going to yell at you. If the socket's on, I'm going to send you to the timeout corner. Don't do that. People get hurt with that. When you go to take off the lug nut, you're going to loosely put your hand around the socket just to guide it so that once the lug nut comes off, it doesn't get squirrely on you and get unsteady. So I'm going to line up the socket perfectly. It's all the way against the rim. I'm going to loosely put my hand around it and then pull the trigger. <laughs> The lug nut comes off, and now what I'm going to do is put this in a safe spot up here on the lift arm. That way when I go to put this back together, it's all within reach. If you set it on the grounds, it's going to end up in the drain, and then it gets lost. I'm going to go to my next one. Next one. And my final one. When I take off my final one, I like that to be at the top. That way the tire doesn't tend to fall off as easy. Um, start with that. And now you'll see the, the lug nut's still on there. I can give it the final twist by hands. And now my wheel's ready to come off. You're going to set your impact gun on the floor or on a tool chest. Never set it on the lift arm or it's going to fall off and land on your toes or somebody else's. I also don't mind if you take it by the air hose and set it down on the ground so that you can go back to the tire. Um, it is okay. Some teachers might not like you setting it on the ground. I don't mind. I'd rather the impact gun be on the ground, better yet on a tool chest, than on a lift arm where it's going to fall and hurt somebody's toes. Tires, some of them are fairly light. Some of them are fairly heavy. Uh, your bigger trucks and SUVs, uh, I would recommend two people, one person take each side of the tire. Uh, this is a Nissan Altima. It's a fairly light tire, so we're going to pick it up and then take it down. Once you take the tire off the car, you're always going to set it on the floor underneath the car. Uh, this way people aren't tripping over it. Uh, you are never going to set it up against the lift arm. That's a no-no. If you set it by the lift arm or on the lift post and somebody lowers the car down, uh, it'll squeeze the tire and it'll take off line across the shop. So it always goes flat on the floor underneath the car where it's out of the way. I'm gonna use my impact gun to take off my next wheel. I'm gonna make sure it's reverse. Line it up on the socket. Put it up on the lift arm. Now let's say the socket gets stuck, or I'm sorry, the lug nut gets stuck inside the socket and you can't get it back out. A little trick is just line it up, turn the socket by hand a few turns, and then you can slide the lug nut out of the socket. It's a great little trick for some of the cars where they've gotten a little rusty. I've got my last one here. I'm going to set my impact gun down on the floor. And set my wheel down on the floor. Now we'll move to the next one. So I needed to pull out a little more air hose to make it to the far side of the car. And this is what you typically end up with. You get those little curly cues in the air hose. That is what I want you to take care of and eliminate before you start working. Give the hose a twist, and make sure the air hose is laying flat on the floor. That way any students walking by can step right over it and nobody gets tripped. You'll see all the way around, minus one little spot I'm going to use, it's laying flat on the floor, and that's what I want to see out of you guys. All right, let's take off our third wheel. ready to take off the third wheel. 
Gonna pick up my impact gun, get rid of that last little twist in the hose. It's laying flat on the floor. On the socket, hand loosely around it. <laughs> set my impact gun back on the floor. And set my tire on the floor. Now we'll on to the force wheel. The next step we need to do as part of this tire rotation is figure out the pattern that we're going to rotate the tires in. We've got four options. Uh, you can do your standard front to back if it's a directional tire. Um, there's an option for all vehicles where you can do crossed. Um, what I prefer to do with my students in my class is um, ignore those unless they are directional tires and either go with a front wheel drive one or a rear wheel drive or four wheel drive vehicle. Uh, what we need to figure out is should the front tires go to the back and the backs crisscross, or should the front tire, I'm sorry, should the rear tires go to the front and the fronts crisscross? Um, basically, you're taking your drive wheels and moving them to a non drive axle to give them a chance to take a little rest and reduce the wear on them. Now, we need to figure out if we have front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or all wheel drive. You could go into your service information and try and look it up, that's always an option. I prefer the simple route, which is look underneath the vehicle and look at the center where the axle would be right here. So our tire would go around here. In the middle, we've got the center mounting point for our wheel on the opposite side are those lug studs. And do you see anything right there? If this were a rear wheel drive car, you would see an axle going from the center here over to the middle of the car. I don't see anything right here. And when I spin this drum, nothing is turning which means this is not a drive wheel. This car is not rear wheel drive. To give you a better example, if we go to the front of the car and we take a look at our front wheels, go in a little closer. On my front wheel, when I look at the center, I see an axle here. When I turn this, I can see it moving, which tells me this is a front wheel drive car. So I see the axle, it goes over here to the transmission. We know it has a drive axle on it. In this case, it's a front wheel drive car. So when I go back to my documents, my well-worn, well-loved tire rotation sheet. And we'll we're going to be going with the front wheel drive option right here. And what we're going to end up doing is moving the front tires to the back. And the back tires are going to go up and crisscross. So that's going to be our rotation pattern for this vehicle. So now I'm going to rotate my tires. If you're confused, what you could do is mark the sidewall of the tire, front left, front right, rear left, rear right. Um, what we're going to do is go ahead and move our back tires up. And then our two front tires are going to crisscross and go backwards. I'm going to cross over. And then this one's going to go over that way. Now I've rotated my tires to their new home and we're ready to lower our car back down and get these mounted back up on the car. Now we're ready to put our wheel back on the car and reinstall the lug nuts. I like to try and keep the one lug stud at the very top and that way when I put the wheel on I know this um, hole should be at the very top and it kind of helps line it up. 
If it's a heavy wheel, I would recommend two students, one take each side to put it back on. You're always going to start your lug nuts by hand, and you're never going to walk away from the car without leaving at least one lug nut on. That way the wheel won't fall off, hit the floor, bounce, and possibly hurt somebody or damage something. You're always going to start it by hand. So I'm going to go to the next one, a couple turns. couple turns and then a couple turns. This guarantees that you don't strip it out uh, or accidentally cross thread it when we go to our next step. Our next step is going to be using the impact gun with a torque stick. I'll show you how that works. So one of the other tools we can use is called a torque stick. This is going to limit how tight the lug nut goes onto the wheel. Uh, this torque stick is an 80 foot pound torque stick and it's also a 21 millimeter torque stick. When I put this on the impact gun, instead of it going to about 300 foot pounds, which the impact gun is capable of, it's going to limit it to about 80 foot pounds. These lug nuts, when I look up the torque spec, you see how that wheel just shifted but it didn't fall off, so we always leave one on there. These lug nuts, the torque spec is um, 72 foot pounds to 87 foot pounds. So we're going to go for the middle and go for 80 foot pounds, which means this works out perfect. Once you have these started by hands, you can use the impact gun to run them down the rest of the way. And I made a little mistake there. Now we're going to use the impact gun with a torque stick to run these down and, and do the initial torque on them. I need to set my impact gun to forward, line it up on the lug nut, and you'll see I'm pushing the bottom of the wheel and that just kind of helps draw the whole thing tight evenly. Now you're going to go star pattern, so we're going to go across. Make sure it's all the way on the lug nut. Crossed. The next one. And now that's the initial tightening phase. That's not final. We're going to use an actual torque wrench, but that got them snug down enough that we can lower the vehicle down and rest the wheels on the ground. Now we'll go to the next one. Sure it's on forward. Now we'll move to the next one. I Left foot on hands. Before we lower our car down, you'll see the air hose underneath the car. We need to fix that. If we lower the car down, the tires are going to sit on the air hose, and one, we might damage the air hose or two, the air hose will be stuck under the car. So we're going to put our air hose away before we lower the car down. Now that I've verified my air hose has moved out of the way, we're going to wind it up so that it's not on the floor anymore. So currently our air hose is all over the floor and before we lower our vehicle down, 
we're going to wind up our air hose and get it out of the way so nobody else trips on it. The secret to winding up the air hose is gently pull on it until the teeth go past the little latch. And then you're going to let it slide through your hand. Do not just let it go or it will damage the air hose, damage the reel. You're going to very slowly let it wind in. And then make sure it's all the way back up. Now the air hose is out of the way. Our area underneath the vehicle is clear and we're ready to lower it down and do the final tightening on our wheels.